Okay, hopefully we are live. I hope you can hear me. Um, let's see. It looks like it's working. And it's giving me lots of messages. Okay, I don't need to customize my dashboard. Okay, sorry about that. Um, can you see if they can hear me? Mm -hmm. we're, just, we're just making sure everyone can hear. It looks like it's working. Okay, everybody's good? Okay. Well, welcome to this overview for History Quest United States, which is coming out really soon. My name is Lindsay Sedano, and I am the author of that one. And I also wrote History Quest Middle Times and worked uh, quite a bit on History Quest Early Times as well. So I'm excited to be back for this third installment. Um, couple housekeeping things. The video of this will actually be available on uh, the Pandaya Press Facebook page. Uh, so if you have to duck out or anything and you want to come back and see how it ended, you can come back and watch it at any time and you can find it there. Um, also, let us know in the comments if this is helpful and then we may be able to do more of these in the future. This is our first time going live, hoping it works. <laughs> um, what I'll do today is a basic overview of kind of what to expect and what's coming with the book and the study guide. And um, I have seen a bunch of questions come through by email and also to our Facebook page. So I'm gonna try to answer some of those as I go along, but we'll also go ahead and have a Q&A at the end. So um, feel free to let us know your questions. Although I thought there was going to be a place where I see the questions and I'm not currently seeing them. So um, if one of the Pandaya people watching wants to keep track of them, we can get them that way as well. Um, oh, I also want to do a quick plug for the History Quest Facebook page, which is called History Quest Teachers Lounge. If you're not already a member, that's a good one to pop over and join. It has lots of people who are using the program. Everybody posts such amazing artwork and projects and great tips and questions and videos and all kinds of extra resources. Um, and that's usually where you'll see longer samples of History Quest as well. Specifically when the audiobook comes out, we'll have a, a good bit of that over there to take a look at. Um, so that's always a great place to connect with other people who are using History Quest. Um, and if you just type in History Quest Teachers Lounge, it should come up and you can ask to join. Okay, so first thing I'm going to cover about History Quest United States are those sort of burning logistical questions that have been coming in. So everybody wants to know, when is it coming out? Uh, the, the answer to that is late April. So it's uh, in the final stages of editing and, and designing a couple little things and figuring out how wide apart the writing line should be, and stuff like that. Just the last few tweaks are happening right now and it'll be out in uh, towards the end of April. And then the other question we get a lot is when is the audiobook coming? Everyone is a big fan of Sonia Field, who is our audiobook actress, who does an amazing job. Um, but we actually don't start working on those until the chapter book is released because it has to match exactly. So just in case we change a word at the last minute or something, um, we have to wait until it comes out. So the audiobooks always trail the chapter books by a few months. So a little bit later this year, you'll see that coming through. Uh, oh, the other question I've seen is, Pandaya is having a March sale right now and it goes until the end of March, but unfortunately this book will not be out before then. So even though this book is not involved in that sale, it will have um, introductory pricing when it comes out. So don't worry about that. Um, so we'll, we'll have more on that to come. Okay, so first off, let's do what is History Quest United States? And then we'll do what it isn't. So what it is, a 35 week long, one year uh, US history course for third through sixth grade. Um, and sometimes, uh, it, uh, just like all the other history quests, it has both the chapter book and the study guide that goes with it. So the chapter book has most of the main readings, um, all of the, the main chapters, and then the history hop time travel part that comes right after the main chapter. That's all um, the way it normally is. And the study guide is what turns it into a full actual course that you might use in your homeschool. That's got all the activities, the maps, um, uh, links to Google Earth, copy work, dictation, questions, uh, recipes, you know, all that kind of, all that stuff. So um, it's actually 
you know, if you were to get the chapter book and not the study guide, you're actually missing seven weeks of content that isn't in there. So 20%, um, <laughs> my dog is playing with a squeak toy. Sorry, I hope you can't hear it. I knew she was going to do that. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> um, maybe she'll make an appearance. So um, if you do get the chapter book and not the study guide, you'll actually be missing um, quite a few things. So let's see, what else? One thing I wanted to point out about that is the, the supplemental book list that we have in there. This time, what I did with those, there's so many really good supplemental children's books for U.S. history, of course. And what I did with those, I try to use ones in the book list specifically covering people that we just didn't have time to get to in the main chapter book. So if you take a look at some of those supplemental books in the study guide, um, and you're able to get some of those from your library, that's going to add just a little more color, a little more, um, I don't know, you know, just adds a lot of character to it. So people like Jane Addams from the Progressive Era, Mary Fields, the first black female stagecoach driver, the invention of the potato chip and the band-aid, just all these other kind of things that we just didn't get to in the chapter book, are a lot of those are in those supplemental books. So if you happen to be able to get some of those um, specifically from your library or interlibrary loan, that's going to really beef it up quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, we also have our Huga History Weeks that we usually do every time. And I actually have the books, so I'm going to show you some of them. Uh, the first one is, I don't know if you're, yeah, you can see it, The Girl Who Helped Thunder, and that's Native American Folk Tales. Um, this one is probably my favorite is that people could fly and we had oh, we had such a good time reading this this year because um, my younger son was reading this one and my older son was reading Song of Solomon which is partly based on one of the tales that's in this book so what a wonderful connection so if you're an adult looking to add to your own reading list um, I recommend reading this to your kids and then Song of Solomon for yourself by Toni Morrison um, we have, let's see, this is not how this might, I don't know if this one's, maybe this one's my favorite. I like, I like them all so much. Um, this is actually um, all African American folk tales that have women as the main character. So that's in one of the weeks. We also have other options um, in case you can't get a hold of that one. There's Sally Ann, Thunder Ann, Whirlwind, Crockett, and Donia Floor, Thunder Rose, who's great. Oop, I got two here. Uh, Swamp Angel, and this is a series. There's other ones that go with this one. And then we also have another week of uh, the tall tales, you know, Paul Bunyan and, and those ones that you'd be somewhat familiar with. You might have learned them in school yourself. And we are going to try to do a week of Huga Civics because nothing's cozier than civics. Uh, this book is so much fun. It's a lot of silliness. It's just going to be super fun to read and work on together. And there's another one um, I don't have on me right now, but so there's actually five Huga weeks this year instead of four, just because we added the civics week. And they're all just so much fun. I can't uh, can't wait to read them with everyone and talk about them. And the reason I picked mostly, uh, besides the civics, all the rest are folk tales. Um, the reason I did that is because a civilization's folk tales tell you so much more than history can about their values, what's important to them, their hopes and dreams, their fears, um, you know, their worries. And it's just such a great way to connect with each culture and learn um, these are what these are what the stories that they told over and over and over that have so much importance to them. So it's going to be a really great year for Huga history. A um, couple things that are new in uh, History Quest United States. One of them is that we have two research quests. Uh, one of them is a deep dive on a Native American nation with a connection either present or historical to your local area. And the other is to do research on your own state and local government. So this is how we're approaching um, not being able to cover in a you know in one year every single state's history or every single Native American nation's history. We just cannot get to all of them in one school year. So we have the kids taking um, responsibility themselves for a week to go ahead, find reputable sources. Um, you know, pull all that information together with a few different options. And I am hoping that if people do that project, that they'll actually come to the History Quest Facebook group, the Teacher's Lounge, and share that with us. So parents there can, um, you know, take uh, your poster or whatever it is that you made and show it to their kids so they can learn a little bit more about your state or a nation that's near you. Um, so those are two of the weeks. 
Also new are discussion questions um, called conversation starters. So we always have discussion questions and they mostly aren't opinion questions. They usually have like a right or wrong answer that you would find in the text. But this time um, we have at the end of that, a bit, like a big question, uh, an opinion question to really get some deep conversation going for you and your child about the topic. A lot of sensitive topics this year. So um, we wanted to make as many opportunities as possible to really work through all that material with your child and um, talk about what what this means, you know, what does this event mean in modern times? Is there something similar going on? Or is there something in your life that's similar to this? So those are all in there. Um, and then the other new thing this year, of course, that I've been talking about nonstop online is uh, the seven chapters on US civics and government. So the previous two history quest books do actually have a little bit of, um, there's you know a little bit about economics, a little bit about civics in there, but this time we've really amped that up quite a bit. Um, we want your child to prepare to be a citizen of their country from a young age and really have that in there and have that overview so when election time comes around or when there's a new law being made or someone's proposed a constitutional amendment or something that they have a little bit of an idea what that is and they're starting to prepare to be an active participant in government when they grow up. Um, and that sort of leads me back, I guess, to you know why have a year of U.S. history? So a lot of homeschoolers will do um, like a, an ancient year, a medieval, early modern, and modern. And that's actually what I set out to do with my oldest son, who's graduating this year, originally. But once we got to that third year, I realized he has to do an entire year of U.S. This is someone who is all into elections and presidents and history and, and all of that in, in the U.S., and it wasn't going to be enough for his needs to have just that bit of U.S. that's kind of peppered in throughout early modern and modern. So, um, and also I think sometimes you you I don't know, you end up adding so much more that you may cut back on some of the modern in the other countries that you're also trying to study. So I like the idea of separating that out and having a year um, after medieval times, a year of your own country's history and civics, and then that final year that has early modern, the rest of early modern and modern where you can see how your country is playing a role in the world at large without having to focus entirely on your country, um, if that makes sense. Okay, so here's what History Quest US is not. Uh, first thing is, I wanna be clear, it is not an encyclopedia or an encyclopedia type approach. So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna show you two really good books. Um, this one is called American Trailblazers, and it's just 50 stories of famous American people that you might want to know about. Excellent book. It's really great. And it's all story based. It's not an encyclopedia. So you couldn't use this to learn, um, you know, every single event in U.S. history. And then this is the Smithsonian American History um, Children's Encyclopedia. And this really does go one after the next chronologically through basically everything um, you know, a kid would need to know about U.S. history. And they're kind of, even though they're both really great books, they're on an opposite end of a storytelling spectrum. The American Trailblazers book is all stories. It's 100% stories. The encyclopedia is 100% encyclopedia. And where History Quest United States is, is kind of in the middle between them. So we're really not, um, not an exhaustive list and review of chronologically every single thing. And also not just some profiles and stories either. We're really trying to cover the major events of U.S. history from, you know, uh, you know, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, the Great Depression, all of the major events that that you would generally know, but also with that deep, rich, personal connection to the storytelling. Um, so a good example is uh, we cover the disability rights movement in there, and we're not covering every single person who's ever been involved in it, um, you know, at large. Instead, the child meets uh, Jennifer Keelan Chaffins and talks about the capital crawl experience that she has. And so she doesn't stop and tell you, you know, and here's 30 other people you might want to know. So if you want to do that encyclopedia type approach, like covering every single thing, that's where, um, you know, you'd want to bring in some kind of encyclopedia to go with it. We're just really trying to get that first overall overview of U.S. history and feel very connected to the people that you're learning about. 
Um, the other thing his request US is not is it is not meant for the very youngest students. We are saying a target age of third through sixth grade. Normally, uh, so for early times and for middle times, it's actually more like first through fourth grade. So this is just shifting up older a little bit. Now the reading level of the chapter book is actually the same as the other two. It is still meant to be read aloud by the parent or independently by an older student. Um, but some of the subject matter is a little more sensitive. And I know that that's going to vary from family to family of, you know, who should be using this or who, who might want to wait a couple years. So one thing I would recommend is uh, we had released back in August our September 11th chapter, and it's available at pandiapress.com as a free download. And if you want to take a look at that one, you could argue that is the saddest chapter in the book. So if that's something, if you take a look at that, and you know this is this is going to be as, as bad as it gets, and take a look at that and see if that's going to be workable for your child, then they're going to be fine with the rest of the book for sure. Um, otherwise, maybe not. And then if you want to get a sense of one of the more lighthearted chapters, we've actually released that too, uh, the Elections Unit Study, which is also available at pandiapress.com as a free download. That chapter is, it's just mostly fun. It, it's, it's very, it's got some silliness. It's very fun. Um, talking about elections in a very, I don't know, non-polarizing way, I guess. And so that's another example of that's kind of be as, as lighthearted as it goes and as as deep as it goes. So that might help you. Um, let's see. And then some of the activities uh, are slightly raised in level in the in the study guide, um, more for that third through sixth grade target range. But there's also recipes and crafts that really anyone can do. So hopefully that helps kind of figure out what is the right age range for this. So I think I went through most of my notes on the main questions um, people have asked. Does anyone have any questions? And do I have a way to see them? <laughs> do you, are you having anything? I'm going to ask my helper. For questions? Yeah. Oh, we got questions? Okay, they texted to me. I don't know why I can't. I would think I'd be able to see them. Okay, let's see. I have to pop out a full-size video. I think I did. Did I? Or are they down here? Oh boy. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I think I see something. Let's just check here. Okay. All right. Okay, there's people who can hear me. That's good. I'm just going to scroll through the whole thing. Oh no, someone's at the eye doctor. Okay. Okay. Oh, so, oh thank you. Nicole posted the uh, table of contents in there. So if you look up in the chat, you can see... Um, Nicole's table of contents and book list in there. So that gives you a really good idea of the scope and sequence of the course. That's all in there. What else we got? Whoops. Oh, and uh, age range. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Facebook's giving me so many pop-up right, things right now. Oh, I don't need all these special features, Facebook. Okay. Uh, so age range is third through sixth grade. Okay, I'm wondering what makes the curriculum different. Oh, it's David. Hi, David. Then the other secular history curriculum on the market, such as Blossom Root and O Freedom. So I haven't looked too closely at those, but I think that, oh, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think either of those are a chapter book on their own. I think they pull in other resources to put together a curriculum. I don't think they are their own actual chapter book. Um, specifically written to homeschoolers. I think they use uh, just uh, multiple other resources that are available. So that would probably be the biggest difference. I do know um, for Blossom and Root, theirs is, I, wanna, I don't want to say the wrong thing again. I, theirs, I believe, is meant to be a two or three year U.S. course. Um, the first one goes up till maybe around the time of the Constitution or Bill of Rights being written. Um, so that would be like a first year, and then the next one uh, goes a little bit further than that. So they're uh, spread across a few years, and ours is actually one full year within a four-year total elementary history package. So depending on what you're trying to do, that would be a difference as well. That, oh, oh, I have a text, sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see here. Oh, they're gonna. Oh, they're trying to get the link for the September 11th, um, and I'll get that in there for you. Sorry. Okay, Jessica. Hi, Jessica. 
Jessica <laughs> says that was a hard chapter for me to get through if that's as bad as it gets. The kids will be fine. It was a hard chapter for me to write. And I was, I was doing the research for it. I had all these books I was looking through. And I was actually waiting for my turn to get vaccinated. And I'm sitting in this vaccine clinic with this big long line going around the corner, reading all about September 11th with all tears coming down my face. It was such a surreal experience. Uh, writing that was, it, it took very long and it was very, very difficult. So that was a tough one. But I would definitely take a look at that if you're um, wanting to see how, I don't know, how upsetting it gets, I guess. Because we don't want to, um, we don't want to whitewash or, or put under the rug or, or shy away from some of these really difficult topics, and we also don't want to leave out the joy. There's plenty of joy as well. We have, you know, the. I had so much fun actually researching the moon landing. Of course, I know about it and everything, but just going through it and listening to actually watching the whole like TV, what everyone else saw on TV, the broadcast and. They must have, I mean, I can't even imagine sitting there and living through that. Um, it's amazing. So there's there's a lot of fun in the book, too. Oh, Jessica, oh, okay. Oh, and they're going to get the link for the elections unit. We'll make sure we get that if we, if they, we have it now? I think if we can't get it now, we'll get it um, at the end and stick it in there. Oh, Jessica says, what will the study on indigenous people be like at the beginning? Anything we need to prepare ahead for? Ooh, that's a good question. Yes, yeah, so that research quest does come pretty close to the beginning. So the introduction week is also on indigenous people as well. And there's nothing that you would need to prepare ahead of time for it. Although there are um, there are live, quite a few library books um, recommended. So it, just like any week, you'd be ordering uh, those to have them on hand. And I think it is the second week in the course is the research quest. So one thing you're gonna want to do is um and we have in there in fact i think we did it as a web link just in case there's that map everybody's seen it before where you kind of click on where you live or you put in your zip code and then it tells you which nations are near you and there's also a way to do it by text message so there's a phone number and i, I tested it um a few months ago and it still worked so i will test it one more time there's a phone number and you just text something or other to this phone number and it will text you right back and actually tell you all of the native nations in your area. So that's kind of cool. So figuring out which nation you're going to research is a good good idea. And then also trying to figure out, um, especially for timing, if there's an event coming up that you want to attend, such as a powwow, um, you would hate to like miss that by one week or something. So that might be something to just get on your radar. Who are we gonna be researching? Can I go to their website and see if there's anything open to the public? that might be coming up because if we want to take a trip there or we want to um, get in touch with them, we want to have that ready to go so we're not missing something. I'm always the person who finds out about things like the day after they're over. Um, okay, so it looks like we got the 9-11 download link in there and the elections ones in there now, so that's good. Oh, Lisa says, how many days a week and how much time should we plan for? That's a great question. So we always set out a five day schedule, but it definitely does not need to be a five day schedule. Um, people change it all the time, depending on what they do. Some people I know will do history one day, science the next, and then come back. Um, and we actually do that in our house as well. So day one has the main chapter. Um, and again, these chapters, I want to say they're like a tiny bit shorter than the chapters in early times and middle times because I wanted to leave a lot of time for discussion. My little guy, my youngest, will he he probably interrupts me like a good 20 times in the, in the middle of a chapter. So a chapter that might take 15 minutes to read with him, maybe like more like 25 because we've got to have a lot of side discussions, which are great. So I actually pulled back on the length a tiny bit. Um, so the chapter is about probably 15 minutes or so plus the time you spend discussing it there's map work for some of it um d2 has that history hop again same kind of length where you're taking the time travel journey um and some of the other activities then there's a craft day and then there's a um the day where you actually show what you learned but you can totally combine them into into you know however you want and some of the recipes are things you may be eating as your dinner so I don't know if you'd count that against your school day. It's sort of like, you have to make dinner anyway. Um, so I, I would say it's probably what, two, two to three hours a week, maybe? That's probably my guess, depending on depending on the complexity of the craft. Um, 
if that helps. Okay, what else? Hi, Jamie. Okay, uh, Tarly says, ooh, if you have time, could you read a paragraph from the book? I have nothing in front of me. <laughs> I actually have nothing. Um, let's see. And I can't even get to it because it's all on the same computer that I'm using. But if you want to take, oh, you know what? You can see me read a paragraph on the book um, on my YouTube channel. I did the September 11th chapter uh, back in, what, I guess August, right? Yeah. Um, back in August, we recorded that. So uh, just so you know, I am not the person who speaks on the audiobook. Nobody wants that. <laughs> so... I did a decent job, but not anywhere near as well as Sonia for sure. So if you go to on YouTube, it's, I think it's just Lindsay Sedano, I think is what my YouTube channel is. I should know that. Um, you can see it in there. I don't even have that many videos, but there's one of me um, reading it so you can hear kind of how it, how it sounds. Um, will the audiobook be available when the print is? And it is, we, I think it is the same narrator. Um, I will check on that just to be sure. And let me just check. Yeah, I think that is. And then, um, it, but it does trail behind by a few months because she still has to uh, record and edit and the production process for that uh, definitely takes a while. And we check every part of it. And um, she just does such a great job. We're really, really happy to have her. Oop. Oh, my, my thing keeps scrolling weirdly. Okay. Oh, Sarah says... What was the logic behind doing U.S. history first instead of doing the rest of early modern or modern and then situating the U.S. within that context? So I, that's the order I teach it in in my family because the, the further you get through history, the more complicated it's going to be. So the themes in U.S., while they are a little bit more sensitive than what you would see in middle times or early times, they're still fairly understandable. But once you get to modern, we're talking all about um, authoritarianism, economic stuff that's kind of hard, communism versus capitalism. There's a lot of isms uh, that kind of come in and that that's where I think fourth grade is better for that than third. And I also like the idea of getting that U.S. perspective of, of uh, the world events that um, that happen. So we, we talked about the Vietnam War, for example. Um, and of course, we're going to talk it from a U.S. perspective, and in fact, our character that you meet is someone who is um, very torn, who is trying to, uh, they're trying to draft him, and he's very torn about what to do, and really wants to be a protester, but he's not sure what to do about it, and getting all of that, and how, you know, how do, how do people in the U.S. feel about the Vietnam War, they're going to know that, then when we go to talk about the Vietnam War from on the world stage, they have that background of what our role was it, was in there. Um, that said, there are people who may want to do all of world and then circle back and do all of U.S., and that's probably okay, too. I, I can't imagine any pedagogical reason why it would be, like, a mistake. Um, but I, for us personally, we want to do this just slightly easier to understand um, topics before we go into modern world. And are there any other questions? See if we have any. Let's see if any other questions come through in about a second, and then we'll just wrap this up. Hopefully, this gave you a little bit of an overview of what to expect uh, coming out towards the end of April. And I've given you so you've got links to 9/11, links to elections. Um, you can check out my YouTube page for. Ooh, what order is preferable? I really do think um, I would go with early times, middle times. Um, U.S. if you're from the U.S. and then uh, modern after that. Um, that was that's what we'll be doing in our family. Oh, and David says so. You mentioned the unit where students study their local indigenous nations, but does the chapter go into specific indigenous nations that would have been interacting with colonists? Yeah. The, oops, sorry. It keeps scrolling where I don't want it to scroll. Sorry about that. Yeah. So about one sixth or a little more than one sixth of the book is about Native American, I'm sorry, of the course is about Native American nations. So the very first chapter after the intro is um, about the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, because we had such a great um, Haudenosaunee consultant working on that with us. It was awesome. It was like the best experience ever working with him. Um, he was great. So that's in there. There We're talking about the um, 
you know, the Powhatan Confederacy. Uh, there's, you know, multiple other chapters where Native American nations are either the main focus of the chapter or are just a big part of it anyway. Um, but then also, like, I know a lot of books will kind of, like, stop talking about Native American nations in, like, I don't know, 1880, 1890 or so, and just, like, never mention them again, which I really don't care for. Um, so you will see them continue to be mentioned um, quite a bit throughout the whole rest, or just in being being agents, being characters um, in some of the later chapters as well. Do you have any idea how someone always asks <laughs> when the modern... Someone always asks where the modern book will come out. Um, no, we don't know. It hasn't even been started yet. But I will say, in the meantime, um, just last year we came out with the Modern Bridge curriculum, which uh, took all the remaining parts of our existing um, early modern and modern into one year uh, that you can use before moving on to the upper levels. So that's there that is available so if you need a modern history modern world history course that is already available um at pandiapress.com so at least there is that ready for you that's uh, a good solid course that you can use is there any other questions let's see okay i guess that might be it and I'll just check my text to see if I'm missing anything. Okay, I don't think so. Okay, cool. All right, well, thank you all for joining me. Oh, wait, is there one more? Oh, yes. Okay, Stephanie says, chapter about elections. My seat requires inclusion of civics. Can you please talk about the activities? Sorry, this keeps scrolling away from me. That might be civics tie-ins. So, okay, so what are we doing with the civics? So we have seven chapters on civics. What do we have? Let's see if I can name them off from memory. The Constitution has a chapter. All three branches of government have their own chapter. We've got elections, constitutional amendments, and the Bill of Rights actually got its own chapter. So that's all seven, not quite in the right order, but that, um, that's the seven that we have. And then each of those will have activities that go with them. So let me see if I can remember them off the top of my head. Um, in the Constitution one, I actually have them kind of like tea staining an old looking piece of paper and copying the preamble in fancy language which is kind of fun. We're making this big poster that you're going to work on throughout the year for the three branches. It's a tree um, and then you're adding one every time that have all the details about those branches. So you'll uh, after your first week, you'll only have one branch coming out and then you'll be adding the other two. So by the end of the year, you'll have this really nice poster you can display. So that takes care of that one. Um, there is one is it the legislative one, I think, where you're writing a letter to a local official, like, maybe it's the election, no, no, that's, I know what that one is, um, we're actually writing a letter to a local official. I write letters to my local officials all the time, and sometimes they write back, um, so I want kids to feel comfortable doing that and get some of that practice, and it's great persuasive writing, at least, I, I like to think my letters are great persuasive writing, we'll see, they change any of the laws I want changed. Um, but I do that all the time, so I wanted to bring that in and um, get the get the kids starting to do that. You never know, and I, I kind of give them a tip too. The lower down the person you write to, the more likely it is they'll probably write you back, which is super exciting. So imagine getting a, a you know letter back from your city council member or something. They're gonna love that. Um, and in the elections chapter, the activity is a little bit funny. Um, we have them making a campaign ad, so they could do it as a poster, as a uh, you know. I don't know, whatever they want, but and I, I'm hoping some people will do videos because I love those, like those black and white videos and, you know, some somebody, you know, doing the negative ad or whatever. So we're going to have some of those to share, I hope. And uh, so hopefully that answered that question. That's some of the activities. And Jessica says, do we have a release date yet? It's just late April at this point. So that's kind of where we are. Are there links embedded in the book. So we actually put our links on Pandaya's website instead because they, as soon as we put them, they change. They've already, some of the ones I put for this have already changed. I had to go back and change them. I was like, are you seriously? Um, so what we'll do every time we try to put a link in a book, you name it, the next day it's gone. So um, instead it'll say like, go to our website and you'll find a link on, um, you know, 
such and such thing. Uh, and you'll have all those links. And the other thing I added, because I love music so much, is um, I think I called it American Jukebox. So each week has a music tie-in. Um, and those are in the links as well, because I know they're going to move around a lot. So every week there's at least one song or something to listen to uh, that has to do with that time period. And it's fun going all the way back to the 1500s until now and listening to all the different kind of music that came up. Um, Oh, yeah, and in case you uh, missed it at the beginning, we will have introductory pricing for History Quest United States um, since it's not coming out at the same time as our current sale. So we want to make sure that there's a way to um, get some savings there. So we'll have more on that coming up. Um, yay! Okay, that's cool. <laughs> okay, any other questions you can think of? I'm scrolling here to see if I missed anything. Okay, I don't think we have, oh, cool. Oh, I know, we're going to get it out soon. I feel so bad. Okay, um, ooh, is it politically neutral? Okay, I want to be as politically neutral as possible. And I'm actually fairly moderate, so it's not like I'm coming from some super far right or left perspective trying to write it neutrally, but it does have things in it, um, I would say I'm not expecting to get a large order from the Florida public schools. Um, it, it definitely has LGBTQ history. So that used to be a neutral-ish topic, but instead um, it's starting to become much more polarized. So if, depending on what you mean by political, I guess, like if you're looking for a book that does not have LGBTQ in it, then this would not be a good choice. Um, probably also not a good choice for like, people who believe in 9-11 conspiracy theories. Um, we've got a nice note about that one day. Um, those something. Um, and also if you are a big anti-vaxxer, it's not going to be, you're not going to like it. Um, there's a chapter you'd end up having to completely skip. So just being transparent, um, definitely want everyone to know what they're getting into. So in, in terms of being politically neutral, I would say it, it is trying to be as politically neutral as possible while also things are turning into hot button issues that sort of shouldn't be, I guess, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Let's wait one more minute and see if there's anything else. Okay, I guess maybe that's it. So thanks for coming and listening to this big long talk. Um, let us know if you have any questions that come up afterwards. If you end up joining the History Quest um, Teachers Lounge Facebook group, I'm on there a lot um, and can answer questions. And, and Charlene and, and everyone from Pandaya Press is also there too. So that's always a good way to get your questions answered as well. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks a lot, and we will see you guys uh, all online at some point. Thanks. Bye.